What up, y'all? Guess what time it is? It's cooking with Silly Dilly, and we're not on Instagram. It's gonna be our first official episode on the YouTube. So if y'all new, which all of you should be, hit that subscribe button, and we're gonna get into the first episode. What we're gonna be making today is a patty melt, just like Whataburger. If you guys like that, if you've never had it, it's life changing. Got the onions, the meat, the cheese, the bread, and basically that's it. Pretty simple, I'm gonna be adding bacon, Silly Dilly's twist, so stay tuned, watch how it's done, and if you wanna make it, definitely follow these steps, so let's get it. All right, y'all, so to start off, we're gonna be making the, pat the patty melt. What we're gonna be using is Angus beef. It's going to be not the fatty 2080, it's going to be 8515, so just a little less fatty, because we're cooking it inside, I don't want you know a grease fire or my house smelling like smoke. It's probably gonna get a little greasy still, but we're gonna do 8515. So pick it up at the store. We're gonna open this up. All right. There she is. All right. We're gonna do thin patties because we're gonna do double patties on these. So I washed my hands. Yes, I did. We'll start off with this amount. I'm not sure how much it weighs. I don't have a scale. I'm not that fancy yet. Yet. All right, that's the key word is yet. So what you're gonna wanna do, is you're just gonna wanna grab a little bit of meat. You can add, take less, depending on how much. But I wanna make it pretty thin. But I don't wanna make it too small. So I'll probably add a little bit more meat and just flatten it out. All right. Some people have like patty presses I don't got that baby and I bet you a lot of y'all don't either so we're gonna show you how it's done so once you're pretty happy with the patty we're gonna pr press it down on the plate but this is a baking pan so I'm gonna call it a plate because you know how it is okay make sure it's pretty cir circular just eyeball it and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that okay it's not perfect but nobody's perfect so we're gonna keep going. Two patties per burger. We're gonna probably make about four sandwiches today. I bought an extra one just in case we need it. It'll be in the freezer. Same thing. You're just gonna pat it out. And when we cooking with Silly Dilly, baby, everything's gonna be authentic and with my own twist. So what we're gonna be doing too is we're gonna have a mayo which is gonna have roasted garlic in it. That's not from Whataburger, that's from me. That's a little trick I learned from culinary school, roasted garlic. I'll show you guys how that's done in a minute. But I'm pretty happy with that one too, so we're gonna put it down, and we're gonna shape it now. So I couldn't really honestly guesstimate how many ounces this is. Let's just say it's two ounces, four ounces, who knows. But just make it that size. All right, not gonna be precise here. I'll do one more for y'all, show you how it's done. And then uh, we'll finish this off and then we'll start that mayo, baby. All right, so now that we got the three patties done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season these. We don't wanna go too aggressive on the seasoning. These are probably my staples right here. Season salt and pepper, gotta love both of them. If you don't like season salt or pepper, Time to get off, baby. So what we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with some pepper. Freshly cracked, because that's the way to go. It's on a kind of coarse. We don't want too chunky of pepper. All right, evenly spread. Get our seasoned salt. Make sure the right size is open so you don't spill it all over the burger, baby. That'd be too salty. No one likes a salty burger. Worcestershire, -shar, or however you say that. Honestly, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just a couple drops. It's just for flavoring. It's like a sweet flavoring if you've never had Worcestershire. Sweet and smoky, that's the best way I can explain it. Put it on my steaks, I literally put it on all my grill meat. We're gonna be doing it on the cast iron today, but basically that's all we're doing for seasoning today. We're gonna to rub it in, probably do the other side when we put it on the pan. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish these patties and then I'm gonna season them and then we'll make our mayonnaise, okay? So let's get it. So what we're doing now is we're gonna be doing a garlic, roasted garlic mayo, all right? So what we have to do to roast this garlic is we're gonna get some pepper, some salt, and 
Most important part is olive oil. So we're gonna get the olive oil. It's about a clove of garlic and we're gonna make sure it's peeled and the butts are cut off. Get the butts cut off, baby. And you don't wanna to put too much, but you wanna put enough to roast it. So honestly, that's enough for me. I'm gonna say a teaspoon. Some pepper. And a little bit of salt. Okay, make sure it's in like a pie pan or a roasting pan. Then we're gonna take it over here to the oven. It's preheated at 350 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and open this up and put these in. And you wanna make sure you keep an eye on this because it is at a high heat and it is gonna burn if you don't watch it. So probably every five minutes, you're gonna to wanna to grab maybe like a cloth and shake it around, make sure it's roasted evenly. Once that's roasted, I'll show you all the next steps. So stay tuned. All right, y'all, so now that we got all the patties all complete, what we're gonna do now, like I said, every five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and stir the garlic, so you're gonna wanna get your oven pad. And open that up, baby, look at that, it's all sizzly. It's not brown yet, but you don't want it to uh, burn on the bottom, so what you do is you just shake it around. You don't have to actually stir it with the spoon or anything. Just shake it around, get the seasonings all over it. It's sizzling, baby, see if you can hear that. Ooh, baby. Garlic is literally the best seasoning agent for anything promise you that i'll put it in my cereal even but we're gonna let that go for probably another five minutes we'll do the same thing then we're gonna start the mayo once it's done so stay tuned for that and we're gonna be cooking with silly dilly y'all so you stay tuned all right y'all so probably the most important ingredient to a patty melt is not just the beef but the onion all right we got to make sure we have nice caramelized onions. So I'm gonna show you all how to make perfect caramelized onions, silly dilly style, but you gotta have a sharp knife, okay? If you haven't invested in a sharp knife, please go do it. If you wanna take cooking serious, it will make a difference, I promise. So, a couple times on the uh, knife sharpening tool, what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep this hairy crap on there, right? It looks gross, but I promise you, this is how you do it. So you're gonna go straight down, cut it in half. And what we're gonna do is put one side to the side. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is have it flat and make sure your cutting board's stable. You're gonna put your hand down here and you're gonna go straight across, but not all the way through, okay? And you're, I want not too fine diced, but pretty small. So we're gonna do a couple times so probably a half an inch every cut until we get to the top. Okay, now you're gonna turn it and use your knife and just go across just like that. And as, as you can see, the onion is not falling apart because we didn't go through it all the way. Okay, now if you don't wanna cry, do it this way. Probably gonna cry a little bit still. That's the way onions are, baby, you gotta get them onions go straight down now and look at that perfectly chopped onion baby literally before I went to culinary school I struggled so hard it probably took me an hour just to cut one onion so it'll come apart just as you hit it with the knife because it's already chopped and look at that that's like a perfectly diced onion now I'm gonna do the other side and then uh, I'm gonna do another half just because I love caramelized onions baby so stay tuned for that you guys will probably see a sped up version but let's get it
All right, baby. Let me show you something that's beautiful. All right, it's gonna be nice and brown for us. Not burnt. I wish y'all could smell this. All right, this is perfectly roasted garlic. We're gonna take it out now. We can turn off the oven. We're all set with this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this rest. We don't want it to be hot when it goes into the mayo. So I'm gonna put this to the side over here. Onions nice and chopped. Burgers are all ready. We're almost done, baby. We're gonna start the cooking. I'm gonna show you guys how to make some homemade french fries though. That's the last step, so stay tuned. All right, so homemade french fries. Get yourself some big Idaho potatoes, cause Idaho, right? Once you get these big Idaho potatoes, none of that bag frozen. That could be easy, that could be good, but we're gonna go homemade. So put about three of them, cause there's not too many people, people eating tonight. We're gonna rinse these. We're gonna keep the skin off, or skin on, I'm sorry, correction. You wanna make sure you rub out all the dirt. Because nasty people touch these before you buy them at the store, I promise you that. So once you're pretty satisfied with the rinse, which I'm pretty, pretty good with it, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, let it dry a little bit, and we're gonna go ahead and cut these up. So I'll show you guys how to do that right now. All right, so now, we got the potatoes. What you're gonna wanna do, stand it up on its side, cut it down, put the other side on that right there. And now what you're gonna wanna do is, I don't want too thick and I don't want too thin. So it's gonna be about medium girth. Aha. All right. Cut it down, baby. I'm gonna say about four cuts. All right. Fan it out, baby. See, look at that. Okay. Now after you do that, you're gonna put it back together like you never touched it. Grab your knife, and just go straight down. Make sure you hold the potato pretty firm so you don't cut your hand, and you keep your chops uniformed. And when you're done, what you get is nice fries. They're gonna stick together a little bit depending on how you cut them, but Nice fries, you're gonna wanna do is grab it, put it on the plate, and do the next one. I'm pretty happy with that one, who cares, it's a little thick. As long as they're not too giant or too small, you'll be all right. So we're gonna go ahead and finish that. Just drop some on the floor, baby, you don't wanna waste, but nothing a little water can't fix. So we're gonna finish these up, and then I'll show you guys how to fry them. Stay tuned. All right, y'all, so now we're gonna make that garlic mayo. We got that roasted garlic on, the cutting board, what we're gonna wanna do is use a spatula, you just wanna press it down. Literally gonna crush it all. Then you can take it off, okay? Once that's done, get your sharp knife, baby. And just kinda one piece at a time, just kinda go with your knife. Just like so. They're gonna be a little crunchy pieces, but that's okay. Once it's like that, you just move it to the middle. Grab two hands and get at it, baby. Make sure it's all mushy. Mushy and gushy, baby, that's where it's at. Get it off the knife, go through it again. This needs to be a fine mince. Like I said, it's gonna be a little crunchy, some bites, but that's okay. No one's ever gonna complain about a little crunch in the burger. I'm pretty happy with that. You can smear it a little bit more, depending on your liking. But make sure, like I said, it's a paste. And we're gonna put it in the mayonnaise now. So stay tuned for that. And we're gonna get some baller mayonnaise. Not regular mayonnaise, baller mayonnaise. All right, y'all, so now we got the uh, garlic nice and minced. We're gonna put it in a bowl. Make sure you get it all. You don't roast and love it for nothing. Get about two tablespoons of mayo. I'm not a big mayo fan, but when you put something like that in there, you're going you to be happy, baby. Put a little bit of seasoned salt, not too much. A little bit of pepper, like I said, my staple. Grab your whisk and just whisk it in. That's what you call gourmet mayo. That's it, that's all she wrote. And now we're gonna go ahead and start the fries. Look at that. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so fries are cut, oil is hot. I'm using regular canola oil. If you got peanut oil, that's a lot better, but that'll work what you got, baby. So you're gonna put about a handful of fries. I'm gonna put it in this basket so I don't burn myself and just drop them in. We're gonna do something called a double fry. Double fry, you blanch it first, and then you take it out, let it cool for a little bit, and then you fry them again. So this is a pretty big pan, so a lot. We're gonna do a little more than a handful. Don't overfill the pan, but make sure you're taking up valuable time if you're not doing all the fries that you can. All right, so that should be good. We're gonna let that go for about five minutes. That's gonna like start the cooking process. We're gonna take it out, do the next batch, and then we're gonna fry and make it sure it's crispy. So let's get it. All right, so about five minutes have gone by. They're nice and white still, baby. We wanna make sure we take them out though. We don't wanna get them brown yet because that's the blanch part. Putting them in the oil, let them cook a little bit. And this fry basket, baby, is a lifesaver because if you're doing this with tongs, we'll be here till they brown. And that's no bueno. All right, fries out, looking beautiful. All right, y'all, so uh, the audio fucked up, my bad. But uh, what we're basically doing is we are putting uh, the rest of the raw fries in, blanching them, and then we're gonna finish those off batch by batch, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and brown the blanch fries. So, sorry about that, y'all, baby, but it's okay. All right, so fries, perfectly blanched, not brown, nice and blanched. So we're gonna start with over here because they're not too hot and they're not too cold. I'm gonna put them back into that oil, baby. Don't burn yourself. Put it back. And we're gonna let this go for another, I'm gonna say seven minutes to make sure those get nice and crunchy. I don't wanna overload the pan, but you wanna make sure you put enough in there so you're not wasting valuable time, baby. People be hungry. They be hungry, baby. All right, that should be good for now. I'm gonna let that go, like I said, for about another seven minutes. We'll finish those off. Seems like a lot of steps for french fries, but I promise y'all, be the best damn fry you'll put in your mouth. Guarantee it. All right, now that we got some time with the fries cooking and the browning up, I'm gonna talk to y'all about this. Applewood bacon, Wright's brand. All right, it's bomb, promise y'all. Pretty thick bacon, it's not your cheap bacon. If you don't wanna spend the money, you don't have to, but I promise you, if you spend the money on a, a pound and a half of bacon like this, cut it in half and fry it up, it's gonna be the best damn thing you have in a burger. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Y'all don't need to see that. You just cut the bacon right in half. It's pretty self-explanatory. Then we'll cook it up in the pan and that'll go right on our bacon. So we're gonna let those fries cook up. But I just wanted to show y'all, get you some nice bacon. Change your life, baby, it'll change your life. All right, y'all, as you can tell, nice and golden brown. I promise y'all, when you take a bite of these, they'll be nice and crunchy. So we're gonna do, take them out. We're gonna put them on this drying rack because we don't want greasy fries. Put them out, put them out. And have crunchy bits in there. That's okay, because that's what makes fries good. Nobody likes a soggy fry, baby. And if you do, there's something wrong with you, baby. We ain't a soggy fry guy. All right, we're gonna let those dry off a little bit. We're gonna put another batch in. Let me just grab it, be careful. Drop, you don't wanna burn yourself. I'm gonna put the rest of these in. I think we'll be okay. We'll let those go probably for about 10 minutes since there's a little more fries than the first time. So we're gonna put those evenly out. Make sure they all get golden brown. And just look at these, baby. Just look at those. Ooh, baby. As you see the sports bucket in the back, hell yeah. 
That's how you do it. All right, now, these have been drying for a little bit. You can probably grab them with your hands. So what you're gonna do, grab them, throw them in the bowl. There's gonna be little stranglers on the, on the, uh, the pan, but that's okay. Throw in the majority of them. What we're gonna use, a little bit of garlic salt. You don't wanna put a lot, but that's just for the flavor. And the majority is gonna be seasoning salt. So if you guys ever had Five Guys, seasoned fries, and my fave, Cajun fries. I want to just go ahead and make sure they're all coated. All right, y'all, we're going we're gonna to test one. I'm going to grab one of these babies. Right, let's do it. Ready? Pretty crunchy. Season to your taste, though. So if you like it more salty, less salty, peppery, whatever, go ahead and add it. My favorite is seasoned salt. Like I said, cameraman got to steal one for himself, baby, but... We're gonna finish these off. I'm gonna cook the bacon now. And uh, we're almost ready for the patties, baby. So let's get it. Make sure the right size is open. Shot. Make sure the right size is open. <laughs> I think I saved it though. Oh, so <laughs> Alright y'all, time for the onions baby. Gonna put in some butter, some olive oil. Look at that, it's like the yin yang sign baby. Grab your plate of onions and just dump it in. You want to make sure all the onions go in there because best part of the burger in my opinion, caramelized onions. Can't have a patty melt without it. If you don't like onions, then don't even dare make this. No point. Stir it all in there. And we're going to just let this caramelize up. I have it on a medium high heat. Get them onions baby and then we'll uh i'll show you all what to put in there but we're gonna let them caramelize first before we season all right y'all so now that these are browning up we're gonna put a little bit of worcestershire i'm not gonna put too much a couple drops some pepper some salt Secret weapon right here, y'all. Gotta get some sugar. You get about two teaspoons of this, just to make sure it caramelizes up. You don't want it too sweet, but this is what will make it nice and delicious. You don't need it, but it's one of my silly dilly tips, so try it, y'all. I promise y'all, you'll love it. So look at it now. Getting nice and brown. You have to make sure you keep stirring it, though. Because then you're going to get burnt onion, and you don't want burnt onion. So I'm going to lower the heat on this now to a low and let this go. See what I did there? Nice little rhyme. Aha. <laughs> All right, y'all. So onions are going. Look, they're getting nice and brown. It's on low, so you don't got to worry about it burning. promise they won't burn. We're going to start with our burgers. Okay, You don't want to make sure they come... And they don't fall apart all right got a hot griddle if you don't got a cast iron griddle like this it's okay use a cast iron regular pan or anything you got honestly it's not a big deal but hear that sizzle baby Ooh, that's what you want to hear you want to get your spatula and you just want to push it down and leave it 
So we're gonna let this go. I'm gonna say two minutes each side. You gotta make sure it's a nice crust and then you're gonna flip it and then we're gonna do two patties. So let me throw one more down. Like I said, these aren't thick patties, they're nice and thin. Just kind of like a Whataburger, baby. So two minutes to go. I'll let you guys know when they're nice and crispy. All right, y'all, two minutes down. You wanna just use your spatula, get right underneath it. Woo! Baby, look at that crisp brown crust on there. That's what you wanna see. I'm gonna let this one in the back go for another 30 seconds and then we'll flip that one too. But as you can see, it's smoking in a little bit in here. It's all right though, because this is gonna be legendary. Legendary patty melt. All right, y'all, so burgers are ready. So you got this thick Texas toast. You can use rye bread, that's the traditional way. But y'all, you can't go wrong with Texas toast. That's one thing Texas got right. Ain't that right, Ricardo? Aha. Uh -huh. All right, I'm gonna put that down. We're gonna go first patty on, okay? So let that go. Next thing, garlic mayo. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some of these onions Put them on top. Next piece is crucial. Grab you Swiss cheese. I'm gonna do one piece. Next, patty. Garlic mayo, gamayo. More onion. A little more onion, because I love onion, baby. Another piece of Swiss. Two pieces of bacon. Screw it, we're gonna do three. All right. Butter this last piece of toast. Make sure you get a nice coverage on it. Put it on top and press down, all right? Whoa. Hell yeah. Press down. Not bad, y'all. Nice and golden brown. It's a little dark on one side, but that's okay, it's not burnt. Not a big deal. We're just gonna let that sit now, just like a grilled cheese. And we'll let it go, all right? So in just a moment, I'll put this on the plate with some fries and we'll cut into it, baby. All right, y'all, I think we're ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and build up the plate. Y'all gonna enjoy this part. This is the best part of the video, so stay tuned. All right, y'all, best part right here. I'm gonna turn it medium well. You don't want your hamburger too pink. We're gonna take a bite, baby. Hell yeah. 
from five. Oops. That's right, y'all. This is the best sandwich you'll ever have. Better than Whataburger, I promise. Yo, do me a favor though. If you guys enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button. We're gonna do another episode very soon. I'm gonna try to do two episodes a week. So if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. I appreciate all the support. We're on YouTube now, no more Instagram. So thank y'all.